that this now moment in which I'm talking, and you're listening, is eternity. like to join me with three deep breaths to send your attention to this video. My name is Nicholas Langley. And today we're going to talk about race. What is racism? In my opinion, racism is to fulfill one's ego and make them superior to another human being and make them feel happy about themselves and make them feel whole in who they're not being racist against. So say I'm white and I'm being racist towards black people. I am fulfilling my ego and, and uniting myself with the white people. And that's what I think it is. It's really just a fulfilling of the ego and uh, makes one feel good about themselves. But people don't realize that there's one race and that's the human race and that we're all the same. Until we recognize that, the world's not gonna change. What's my perspective of racism? I've got a good little um, situation a couple months ago, way back um, when I was playing basketball at Meadow Breeze. That's our park. And a couple of my close friends were being racist and uh, and we're gonna use their names, we're gonna cover their names. Uh, they're gonna be called Ruben, Ruben and uh, Dalton. So Ruben and Dalton are uh, watching, watching these uh, black people come up to the courts and the, the middle court was empty. All white people playing on the right court, all pe white people playing on the left court, and all black people playing on the, uh, the middle court. And uh, they started playing some music and Ruben and Dalton started uh, dissing their music, saying, oh, this is mumble rap, like, what is this shit? Like, this is horrible music. And and they wouldn't stop talking about how bad their music was. And instead of playing basketball and trying and, and, they, and trying to win and trying to have fun, they were more focused on dissing the other's music. And I was just so baffled by this. I was just wondering as I was guarding this person, like, what are you saying, dude? Like, and I told her, I was like, dude, Focus on the game, like, who cares? And I recognize that the diversification right when it happened, right when I saw the two courts and then the one court in the middle, I I recognized it. And then it was just a matter of time until the other person who runs this YouTube channel recognized it too, James Fox. And we come up to each other and we're like, dude, look at this diversification, like, what the heck? And so what we did is we uh, we went up, to, I'm sorry, it's really cold in here. <sighs> Let me just shiver real quick. <laughs> Okay, so James and I go up to all the black people playing in the court and we say, hey, we got next. So we go get three other people to play with us and uh, we wait for this game to be over. And uh, then we start our, playing our game and uh, there's already some tension rising. Everyone from our court, all the white people lined up, started watching us play, the black people, and all the black people were watching us. Wow, it's so cold in here. It's all right, temperature's just a state of mind. And so we have a, almost like a rooting side for the white people and a rooting side for the black people. And the, you know me, I'm an amazing basketball player. <laughs> but I was killing it. Um, I was I was doing pretty damn good. And uh, I think I had like five or six points in the beginning and we're winning and we're winning six to three. I'm throwing on a sweatshirt. <laughs> and we're winning six to three. And uh, the referee of this, um, of this game was black and he starts calling us the white boys so i recognize it and i'm like hey there's no need for that homie we're all the same i think he ignored me um i'm pretty sure he did let's just say his name's green because that color green so green is saying all right white boys are winning what's going on what's going on white boys winning i'm like hey there's no need for that we all equal here huh and some people were like yeah 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 and then i'm guarding i'm guarding I go down, I score again, my mid-range is on fire, my shot's on fire, I'm killing it. And I hear white boys up, white boys seven points. I'm like, hey, like, sh like shut up, like, we're all equal here. Like, what's up with that? Next possession, he starts calling our team, Nick's team, that's my name. 
And I'm like, oh, that's dope. I don't think that's a lot better than, uh, than, than white boys. But as we're playing this game, all the, the crowd, all the white boys, like all the white kids watching us play, play, every time I scored, they were cheering. Every time black people scored, they weren't. Every time the black people scored, the black people would cheer. The white people wouldn't. Every time there was a controversial foul, where do you think people's biased opinions land on, on what happened? So obviously the white people are gonna go with the, the, the white people. And that's what happened. Like There was a couple controversial fouls and and the white people were saying, oh, that's bullshit, that's bullshit. Um, actually, Ruben and Dalton were, or Ruben was uh, one of the main contributors of that. He was saying like, oh, that's bull crap, they're cheating. And it was bull crap and it, it pissed me off. We ended up losing the game and um, I, I got a lot more out of that game than I, than I came in with. I was like, wow, there's a, a great deal of racism with my uh, my good friends here. And a lot of those people are my good friends. So after that game, I was invited to play with all the black people, right? So it was nine of them, one of me. And the same guy, there was this one guy, this old old man walking around the uh, the park. And uh, I saw him a couple times walk by and watch us, like not really watch us play at all. Defending on, on defense, um, this old guy, I just see staring dead in my eye, just staring at me. I'm the only white guy playing with all these, these black guys. And, and he's just staring at me the whole entire game. And I'm just like, what is this guy thinking right now? Like, why is he staring at me? I was like, wait, is it cause I'm doing good? Cause I was doing good in that game too. I was doing really good. But I was like, nah, I was doing good in the white game too. When I was playing with all white guys and he wasn't staring at me. And I just, to this day, I don't know what that guy was thinking, but he was staring at me for a good half of that game and just staring, staring, staring. And what was going on through that guy's mind, I, I hope was good. Um, I really do. Um, but that was just very really interesting to me. So now, that we know racism is a total diversification. Why is it? Are we taught it? Are we born with it? Are we brainwashed to it? Why, why is racism, racism a thing? Why why is there, why did that happen? Where two white courts and then one black court, like why, why was that a thing? Luckily, James and I broke the diversification, diversification but it, it aroused more information in me of what is present, what was present in that moment. And that was a whole deal of racism. And I feel like James and I really um, did something good that day because um, it opened my eyes a lot with what this world actually is. So are we born racist? I think we all know the answer is no to that, right? Okay. Are we taught racism? Mm, I, don't, I don't really think. I mean, maybe if there's, maybe if you're sat down and taught by your dad or your mom, like, like in a devilish, like, this is, this is harsh, but maybe a lot of people, like, parents are racist and they put in their kids' minds that they be racist. Like they, they sit down as a kid, maybe like talk to him a couple times, say like, oh, don't hang around that black neighborhood. Like bad stuff happens there. That's one of the most harsh ways of racism is formed. And I feel like that's where the most prominent forms of, form of racism comes, where it's taught by the parents. But how do the parents become racist? Are their parents racist? Are their parents racist and their parents and their parents and their parents? Well, here's a little video about the subconscious and um, how media subconsciously makes us think differently. So here's a video from our new editor. Um, I hope you guys like the new intro too. Uh, Ethan Young is editing for this for us, so I'm totally grateful for this and he's a part of this channel now. Uh, it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna look more professional. Uh, it's, it's awesome, it's awesome. So here's that video. Instead of watching some ridiculous late night fright commercial about your immune system getting weaker or you need a flu shot or you need to drink a certain beer, drive a certain car to look a certain way or to be, uh, to be loved or liked and that's all programming where you're relying on something outside of you to bring you uh, some emotion or feeling that uh, we teach them how to become the stars of their own movies and we induce a trance with their eyes open and they understand the science behind trance. And when you're in trance, you're less likely to analyze. And what separates your conscious mind from your subconscious mind is your analytical mind. So as they move into trance, they slow their brain waves down, they stop analyzing, they increase their level of suggestibility. And suggestibility is your ability to accept, believe, and surrender to information without analyzing it. So 
go back to a late night fright commercial where you're just sitting staring at the com at the TV it's called programming for a reason your brain's in trance you're in alpha or high level theta you're not analyzing you're just sitting there and all that information is going right into your subconscious and it's re tape it's recording it so then when you start experiencing any of those symptoms or you start feeling some lack or emptiness your brain is naturally going to create the picture of what you associate as a reason or uh, a way to get out of that, uh, that, out of that emotion. Is media so, one of the most dangerous things we put in our brain? Oh my knowing? God, I mean, if you're watching television, don't watch anything that you don't want to experience because you're programming yourself for a specific outcome. And it turns out that many of the commercials are actually programming you for the very thing they have the solution for, if you look at it from an objective standpoint. So I thought, why not get a group of people to go into trance and understand the science behind it. And then instead of looking at some frivolous commercial, why not be the star of their own future? And when they play a strong song, like a powerful song that motivates them, and they're watching scenes of them and their future, just like when you were you know, watching, uh, driving down the car and hearing a song on the radio and it reminds you of a time in your life, uh, an associative memory, uh, you're associating that song with some memories from a biological standpoint, remembering your future is actually no different than remembering your past. And you can program your subconscious uh, into that future. And so uh, that helps people then to get clear on the future that they want to embrace. And it puts them in that right energetic or emotional state. So we use a lot of the mind movie technology. Um, we teach uh, uh, them how to uh, specifically create something out of nothing. Uh, we teach them uh, how to um, connect uh, to that unified field and to create from the field instead of from matter. Uh, and turns out the brain and the heart gets highly organized when we do this. Uh, and we've been doing this new thing uh, in, the, in our week-long events, which has been really profound. And, and we've been teaching coherence healing. And... Um, we have witnessed some of the most incredible miracles, Brian, that, that I thought I would never see in my lifetime. Okay, now that you, now that you watched that video and you're back with me, um, there's a couple shows, a lot of shows on, on Netflix or television, such as shows like Blackish. What is Blackish? I haven't done that much research into what the show is, but I think it's when, if I recall, a white family moves into a black neighborhood and this television show for entertainment purposes makes jokes that draw conclusions on white people habits and black people habits this show deliberately makes fun of different races and this show is just one of the many ways that entertainment subconsciously programs us to be racist another show or a movie for example is um which i used to think was a very cool movie and was a, a fun movie to watch. White Men Can't Jump. How many people love that movie? A lot of people. It's on a lot of t-shirts. A lot of people love that movie. But the amount of conclusions drawn, the amount, not the conclusions, the amount of this is a black habit, this is a white habit, white men can't jump, black men can't jump, you, can joke, you can't joke about this, you can joke about that, uh, this is black culture, this is white culture, and the amount of separation between the two like here's one side and here's another and and that just subconsciously makes your brain draw conclusions on what habits relate to which race and you really have to watch the movie to consciously to realize this there's so much racism but they make jokes out of it and they make it funny to make it okay and it's not okay because them making it funny it programs yourself in the future to be to, to draw conclusions to certain races. And if you think the government's not racist, just check out what happened after Pearl Harbor. None of those Asian Americans did that, but we locked them away. The government locked them away because they were scared of the race. So I'm getting a little, I might be losing you here. Hopefully you're still with me, but in the end, racism is all about fulfilling one's ego to make them feel happy about themselves. And then thinking that they unite with their white people and being racist towards black people, thinks they unifies themselves with the white people. And not understanding and recognizing that 
there's one race and it's a human race and until we unify as that and and the world's not going to change racism is one of the most prominent ways to diversify us and the media does a great job of doing that media entertainment television so what i want you guys to do is start being conscious of this when you watch television shows start being conscious of racism in your daily life because i used to be racist i used to think oh that team's all black they're gonna be more athletic than me <laughs> that's the biggest scam in the world it's the biggest scam in the world i used to be racist i used to think i used to draw conclusions and a lot of my friends are still racist like i'm sorry for exposing you guys but you're racist and I don't, and I don't like that. And I was just at work the other day, and I'm not gonna say who it was, but they were making jokes about black people, like, like at least 20 jokes. And I just put on a fake smile and laughed. And I just feel so guilty for that. I just, I didn't know what to say. I was just like, in the moment, I was just like, ha, ah, yeah, yeah, ha. Ah, ah. But like, I wish I could just say to that guy. Like, I, I probably will the next time he jokes about it. I don't want to make a big ruckus about it, but I'm gonna say like, that's not funny. Like, what's so funny about that? And all him and him joking about black people is literally just his fulfillment of his ego. I hope this video gets a message across. Racism is horrible. Racism is undoubtedly affecting our nation. Racism is used in propaganda. Racism is everywhere. Until we recognize that we're not gonna unify.